Hello everyone. In my monetary policy series, this video is addition to that series where I am talking about the problems of monetary policy. Here I would be discussing the monetary policy lag, which is the problem in monetary policy making. So before going in a discussion of monetary policy lag, I would like to put some questions in front of you. My questions are what makes monetary policy ineffective? What are the problems with the monetary policy making? And what is monetary policy lag? So let us find out the answer for these questions. Problems with the monetary policy are conflicting goals or a trade-off among the final targets. We have seen in our earlier videos that there are trade-off among the final targets of monetary policy. That means achieving one target, you miss the other. So it is the major challenge towards the policymaker to maintain a critical balance among all the final targets of monetary policy. Along with this, we have seen that in the long run, output target cannot be achieved because monetary policy has no control on long run aggregate supply. So output target is a quaxomatic goal for monetary policy. In this video, we will be discussing in detail the monetary policy lag, the problems of the monetary policy. So let's find out what is this monetary policy lag. Monetary policy lags are basically a time lag between the time when the economic event or a shock like recession or it may be a hyperinflation that had occurred in the economy and that call for an immediate policy response and the time when the policy action resulted in a desired changes in the economy and recovering the economy from the economic shock. So these two involves a time lag that is a time lag when the event had occurred the economy witnessed the shock and the time when the desired changes led by the policy action has recovered the economy. Monetary policy lags are mainly classified into two types, the implementation lag and the effectiveness lag. Implementation lag is further subdivided into three categories. First is the information lag, second one is the recognition lag and third one is the legislative lag. Let us find out these lag in detail in the coming slides. So the first lag in the monetary policy is the implementation lag. What is this implementation lag? It is a difference between a time policy action is needed and the time action occur. So basically it is a gap of time between the action needed or required in the economy and the time when actual action has taken place. This implementation lag is further subdivided into information lag, recognition lag and legislative lag, which together are responsible for the implementation lag. So this information lag implies the lag in the availability of information about the state of the economy. Recognition lag is lag related to the recognition of the actual problem or the actual situation of the economy by the monetary authority and the policy makers and deciding what policy actions are required on the basis of available information. Whereas the legislative lag includes lag in the enactment of the appropriate legislation needed for a policy action to occur. Now let us see the information lag. It is the lag which is associated with the availability of information about the state of the economy. To take an appropriate policy action, monetary policy makers must have complete information about the state of the economy. In an economy like India, there are three major sectors agriculture, industry and services. So it is the responsibility of the policy maker to have a complete information regarding all the three sectors of the economy 
Along with that, policymakers must have information with respect to the price level or inflation in the economy. As in India, inflation is measured by wholesale price index and consumer price index. But from 2014, consumer price index is used as a measure of inflation, which is calculated on the monthly basis by Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Likewise, they should be updated with the information on unemployment, which is given by CMIE on monthly basis and information with related to real GDP. So collecting the informations from all the major sectors of the economy is not an easy task. It is a challenge in itself. As some reports come on a monthly basis, some on quarterly basis, some on yearly basis. So collecting information is actually a challenge because it takes time which is responsible for a lag and that lag is called the information lag in the process of monetary policy making recognition lag the lag which is associated with recognizing the actual problem in the economy after the collection of information rbi is available with the data on the entire economy now it requires lots of time, that is time for recognizing the problem in the economy. However, there are various software tools that can help RBI to recognize the problem in a faster manner. After recognizing the economic status, RBI can find out where the economy is. Is the economy is standing in recession or depression or recovery or a boom state? Now, Suppose if there is a recession in the economy, then the next question is how bad is the recession? How much need to be done to correct it? And above all, on top of it, recession is not identified until the six months after it begins. So now recognition lag is basically a delay between when the economic shock occurred and when it is recognized to have occurred by economists, central bank and the policy makers. Why is this delay happen? This delay is because the economic process always take place over time. Along with that data documenting the state of the economy is not immediately available. Time is also involved in accurately analyzing the data. So the entire process of identifying and remedying an economic problem can take anywhere between six months to three years. And therefore, this lead to the issues that are often addressed very late. Next is legislative lag. It is the time monetary policy takes to pass legislation to implement a particular policy. For some policy makers, there may be a significant legislative lag, that is lag in policy actions due to lag in enacting any required legislation. But in general, for monetary policy, legislative lags are seldom an issue. They are more important in fiscal policy. So now I think you must be clear on implementation lag information lag, recognition lag, and legislative lag. Now we will be discussing the effectiveness lag. Effectiveness lag. It is a time lag between when a policy is made and when the policy action results in the change in the economy. Sometimes it takes many months or year for a policy action to have an actual impact or a desired impact or we can say the full impact on the economy which lead to effectiveness lag. At the same time, if the forecast was done accurately, the policy action taken today could help to achieve the final target for the economy in years time. But unfortunately, economic forecast over horizon of year or more are not very accurate. Along with that, 
it is difficult to forecast the business cycle turning points that is when the economy moves from recession to expansion or expansion to recession let's understand suppose the economy is having the problem of fall in the price level in the economy what rbi will do rbi will try to increase the money supply so that price level will increase theoretically this action would immediately lead to increase in aggregate demand and then increase the price level but in practical application monetary policy things do not occur so quickly let us understand the effectiveness lag with the help of example and try to find out how efficiently rbi transfer the benefit to the actual borrower of the fund so we find that any transmission in the monetary policy from rbi to commercial banks and commercial banks to borrower takes a slow process because whenever rbi makes change in the bank rate commercial bank takes time to make change in the interest rate thus leading to effectiveness lag in the monetary policy so to make monetary policy more efficient and for the faster policy transmission rbi introduced marginal cost lending rate in 2016 which has a provision that any change in the repo rate by rbi must be instantly reflected in the change in the lending rate under mclr by the commercial bank so that it would give the benefit to the borrower instantly without time lag and this reduces the effectiveness lag and makes monetary policy more efficient if you have any question on this presentation please put your question in the comment section and like and subscribe my channel to get further notification thank you so much